Hello there, this is an Algebra 1 video. It is Chapter 9, Section 1. And today we will be talking about graphing quadratic functions. We spent the last chapter um, talking and dealing with quadratics, so you're familiar with those. But now we're going to be um, graphing them. Now in your textbook you will notice that they use um, a different technique for graphing than what I'll be showing you, so make sure that you um, take some good notes today. So the first thing I want to do before we start is basically give you some of the basic characteristics for a quadratic function. Um, first of all, for standard form of a quadratic, we have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You've seen that before. And of course, in order for it to be a quadratic, the a value here has to be something that's not zero. Um, because if you, this was zero, then this term wouldn't exist and it would just be linear, not quadratic. Um, we also have the um, name of the shape of the graph. You'll see here this little um, U-looking um, graph is basically what we call a parabola. So the graph of a quadratic function is what we call a parabola. And the parent function, in other words, the most basic, simplest form of a quadratic is when the A value is 1, because it can't be 0, but the B value is 0 and the C value is 0, so these terms don't exist in the most basic um, function, which is f of x equals x squared. That's what we call our parent graph, and that's um, what you'll see um, in, your, in your textbook. And then here we have a couple of characteristics that are below here that I want to show you on this graph over here. And this AOS stands for axis of symmetry. So all parabolas are symmetric, meaning they have the same thing on both sides. Um, when you think about the middle of the parabola, you have this point here, either it will be at the bottom or at the top of the parabola because the parabola could be upside down. Um, and so when that happens, the vertex, what we call the vertex, the middle point here of the parabola. And then if you draw a imaginary, okay, it's an imaginary line, it's not actually part of the graph, that's why I did it in red and that's why it's broken up like this, is what we call the axis of symmetry. So this is basically the middle of the parabola. So whatever you see on the right-hand side of this imaginary line, you will see on the left-hand side of that imaginary line. And we call it the axis of symmetry. Now, if you want the equation of the axis of symmetry, it's always going to start with an x because it's a vertical line. And the equation of a vertical line is always x equals a number. But to get that number, you use the a and b values from the original quadratic in the form here, negative b divided by 2a. All right, for your y-intercept, the place where it crosses the y-axis, that means that the x-coordinate would be zero. And so again, if the x-coordinate were zero in both these places, then you would have zero plus zero plus c. So then the y-coordinate would be c. So the y-intercept for a parabola is always going to be zero c. And then the vertex, I uh, mentioned earlier, the vertex is the very bottom or the top of the parabola, depending whether it's upside down or right side up. And it's always in the middle of the graph. And to find the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex is the same as the equation of the axis of symmetry. So negative b over 2a. Once you know what that value is, you can plug that value into the function itself. And f of negative b over 2a becomes the y-coordinate of the vertex. Now that might sound a little tricky, but when I do the example, you'll see what I mean. So we're going to move on here to our first example. It says use a table of values to graph y equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 4 state the domain and range. And this is where I was talking about the book, doing it differently. In the book, you'll notice that they ask you to use table of values. And in the book, it appears that the table of values kind of just came out of nowhere. One of the most common questions that I get is, how did you decide to choose those numbers? Um, and the book will have a bunch of x values here. And they won't really tell you where they got them from, other than the fact that they just kind of picked random numbers. It is important whenever you, draw, whenever you draw a graph to always have negative values, zero, and positive values. Uh, that's a fair sampling of the different types of numbers that you can plug into a function. But we want to be a little bit more strategic. So we want to use this idea of vertex um, to graph. And so you only need to have about three points to graph a parabola. But that's only when you actually have the right three points. It doesn't, you can't just pick whatever three points you want. Um, if you want to use only three points, then you have to be strategic about it. And so what I like to do is find the vertex. I like to find the vertex because it's the middle. And then I always pick one number that is to the right of the vertex 
and one number to the left of the vertex because they're symmetric. So I'm going to show you that method here in this example. So we said earlier that the x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. So x equals negative, and the value of b in this case is 6 divided by 2, and the value of a in this case is 3. So there's my negative b over 2a, which becomes negative 6 divided by 2 times 3 is also 6. So my x coordinate of the vertex is negative 1. So I'm going to go over here, and in my t-table, I'm going to put negative 1 um, and a little v here so that we know that it's the vertex. That's the middle of the graph, negative 1. And to get my y-coordinate, I'm just going to put the negative 1 into the function above. So I'm going to say 3, negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 minus 4. So this is the part where earlier I said f of negative b over 2a. It looks complicated because the negative b over 2a is a big um, fraction, but all it means is that you're going to put whatever x value you got here, you're going to plug that into the function, and that's what I'm doing right now. So I plug in the negative 1. Again, be very careful right here, Tristan, who makes this mistake often. Um, you want to make sure that you don't multiply first. We want to do PEMDAS. PEMDAS says exponents before multiplication. The E comes before the M. So before we multiply 3 times negative 1, we actually take the negative 1 and square it first. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then we multiply that by the 3 and get positive 3. A lot of students go 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and they square negative 3 and get 9. That's not the way to do it, okay? So the answer here, we have 3. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, and then minus 4. So 3 minus 6 is negative 3, and negative 3 minus 4 is going to be negative 7. So the y coordinate is negative 7. So now this is the middle of my graph, negative 1, negative 7. So all I need to do now is pick two more points, but again, I'm going to be strategic about it. So I want to pick a point that is to the right and to the left of negative 1. So if you're thinking about a number line, and here's negative 1, what's a point that is to the right of negative 1? That would be like 0. And that comes after the negative 1. And what comes before the negative 1 is a negative 2. So that's basically the points that I'm going to pick. So now I have my three points. That's all I need. But in order to get the values that I need here, I'm going to have to plug one of them into the equation. The nice thing about picking a point um, that is equidistant from the vertex, in other words, the same distance from the vertex, um, the 0 is one unit away on the right, the negative 2 is one unit away on the left, is that these two will have the same value. So you don't have to do it twice. You can do it once, and it saves on time. So because it's easier to plug in 0 than it is to plug in negative 2, I'm going to plug in 0 to the original equation. And again, I'm going to get 3 times 0 squared plus 6 times 0 minus 4. So 0 squared is 0, 0 times 3 is still 0, 6 times 0 is still 0, 0 plus 0 is still 0, and 0 minus 4 will, th will give you negative 4. So here we put a negative 4, it turns out that they're both going to be negative 4 because we strategically picked them to be equidistant from the vertex. And because of the symmetry, we know that it's always going to work that way. So if you don't believe me, you can go back and you can plug negative 2 into your function, and you'll get negative 2 squared is positive 4 and 4 times 3 is 12, and 6 times negative 2 is negative 12, and 12 minus 12 is 0, and then 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So you still get the negative 4. But again, you don't have to do that every single time. The whole point is to save on time. So trust that when you pick uh, these two points equidistant from the vertex, that you will always get that result. So now all we have to do is plot our points. Negative 2, negative 4, we're going by 2 here, 2, 4, 6. So here's negative 2, and negative 4 so is uh, 2, 4, so we're going to be right here. Then we have um, negative 1, negative 7. So negative 1 is going to be right about here. And then 2, 4, 6, 7 will be right about here. And then our last point is 0, negative 4. So 0, negative 4 will be here. And then we can just draw our little skinny parabola right there. All right, and there's your graph. Now the other thing that this question asks us to do is to state the domain and range. The domain for a parabola will always be all reals. 
So we don't have to worry about any issues with domain for a parabola. But the range is the value um, of the y's. So what values are possible for y? You can see from the graph that the lowest point on the graph is going to be negative 7, and that's the y value. There's never going to be a y value below negative 7. So for the range, we're going to say that as long as y's are greater than or equal to negative 7, we're good to go. Because these arrows, arrows indicate that the y values are going to go on forever in the positive direction. But this function is never going to drop below the negative 7 there. So um, that is your domain and range. So now we're going to have you do this example on your own, and then we will move on to our next example. In example two, it says find the vertex, the equation of the axis of symmetry, and the y-intercept of each graph. But the good news is that we can see the graph. Um, it's already graphed for you. And by the way, um, I graph these from the textbook, but I don't always do the best job. So if you want to see them a lot um, better and neater, you can find them on page 544 in your textbook. All right, so find the vertex. Remember, the vertex is that middle point um, on the graph. Um, here's a parabola that's, that's in its normal position. This guy over here um, is upside down, so you can see how the vertex is up here. Um, it's the highest point on the graph in that case, and in this case, it's the lowest point on the graph. So all we have to do is give the coordinates of this point. And so we see that we're going by ones. This is a one, two, three. So the vertex is negative one for our x coordinate. And since it's on the x axis, our y coordinate is zero. And we said earlier that the axis of symmetry is always the same as the x coordinate of the vertex. So you always put x equals the negative one. It is not okay for you to put axis of symmetry and then just write the number negative one. It's asking for the equation of the axis of symmetry, which means you have to have an equal sign and you have to have the x. So you have to have x equals negative 1. You can't just put negative 1. Um, and then they want us to know the y-intercept. So we want to see where on the graph it crosses the y-axis. When you have the y-intercept, the x-coordinate will always be 0. And the y-coordinate is right here. It's crossing right about here. That's a 1, so it's 0, comma 1. Again, when you do the y-intercept, make sure that you always put 0 as the x-coordinate and not just put 1. It's very important that you do that. So, um, that's part A. Now we'll do part B. Let's come over here and do the same thing. Vertex. Want to find the um, x and y-coordinate at this point right here. So here's 1, 2. Let's say the x-coordinate is 2. The y-coordinate is 3. The axis of symmetry will have the same value as the x coordinate of the vertex, so x equals 2 for our axis of symmetry, and your y intercept is the place where it crosses the um, y axis, which it looks like it's crossing right about here. The x coordinate should be 0, and the y coordinate being negative 1. Alrighty then, so that's all we have to do there. So now you will do the same thing in this example, and then we will move on to Example three. In example three, they want us to do this um, pretty much the same thing that we were doing in, in um, example one, only they're not asking us for domain and range this time, and um, they are asking for the y-intercept this time. So find the vertex. We're going to use the same method that we did earlier, which is that whole negative b over 2a scenario, but we're going to do it a little bit quicker this time because now you understand why we're doing it and how the steps are working. So. Um, we're going to start with our x coordinate. We want to know what that is. So it's going to be negative b over 2a. And in part a, the b, cord the b uh, value is 4, and the a value is 2. So I get negative 4 divided by positive 4. So again, I have an uh, x coordinate of negative 1 for my vertex. And to get the y coordinate, we are going to um, plug the negative 1 into the function. So 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 3. So we're going to get negative 1 squared is positive 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 minus the 3. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2 minus 3. We're going to get negative 5. So our y coordinate is negative 5. So they're not asking us to actually graph this function, so we're just going to put down our information here. The vertex, let's see if my pen will come back. My vertex, there it is. 
is going to be x coordinate negative 1, y coordinate negative 5. Just like that. Our axis of symmetry, vertex, axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 1, same as the x coordinate of the vertex. And for our y intercept, we make the x coordinate 0, and when we plug 0 into this function, this will go away, this will go away, you'll just get negative 3. Or basically the c value of the function. So those are the items they asked for. So now we'll do the same thing on part b. We're going to go x equals negative b over 2a. Notice how I use parentheses for the, for the variables. So b is 6, and a is negative 1. So on top I get negative 6, on the bottom I get negative 2, a negative and a negative is a positive, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So my x coordinate is 3, my axis of symmetry is going to be 3, the y coordinate of the vertex is going to be me plugging in the 3 into the x values, and here I'm going to have 3 squared is 9, and then 9 times negative 1 is negative 9, 6 times 3 is going to be 18 plus 4, so negative 9 plus 18 is positive 9, and then we're going to add 4, and we're going to get 13. So our vertex is going to be x coordinate 3, y coordinate 13. Uh, the axis of symmetry will be x equals 3, the same as the x coordinate of the vertex, and our y intercept is always going to be x 0, and the y value is the c value from the function, so that's going to be 4. And there we go. For this example, we've answered um, the different parts. So now we can let you try this guy on your own. Remember, you're not the graph it, just give those three pieces. You want to give the vertex, axis of symmetry, and the y-intercept. Then we're going to go to example four. We can run along here. In example four, we're going to talk about maximum and minimum. Um, and the maximum and minimum of the function you've kind of already seen before is that you have some parabolas that will open up, in which case you will have a vertex that's at the bottom of the graph, and that would be the minimum of the graph. Um, if you have a parabola that is inverted, that usually happens when you have a negative x squared as opposed to a positive x squared. And when, it, when this happens, you're going to have the vertex at the very top of the graph, and therefore it becomes a maximum. It is impossible for one parabola to have both a maximum and a minimum. You either have one or the other. So in this case it says consider f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. And in part A it says determine whether the function has a maximum or minimum value. Because of the negative 2x squared, well just because of the negative, it doesn't really matter if it's a 2, but because it's negative, we know that this parabola is going to look like this. It's going to be upside down. And because it's going to be upside down, it's going to have a maximum. So for part A, determine whether the function has a maximum or minimum. It's going to have a maximum. And then it says, um, state the maximum or minimum value of the function. So now that when it says to state the maximum or minimum value, they want us to give the y coordinate um, and to do that, we have to have the vertex. So we're going to go x equals negative b divided by 2a. And the b value in this case is negative 4. And then the a value is negative 2. Notice how I have those two negatives. because It's negative b. If b is already negative, it means it's going to be positive. So in this case, the negative and the negative make that a positive 4. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 and now you have negative 1. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1, but that's not even the answer to the question. They want to know what the maximum or minimum value is, and the value is the y-coordinate of the function. So now that we have the x-coordinate, we have to plug it in to find the y-value. So um, we're going to put negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 6. So we're going to get negative 1 squared is positive 1, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and then we're going to have negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, and then plus 6. So this negative 2 plus 4 is going to give you a positive 2, and then 2 plus 6 is going to give you 8. So it turns out that the um, value that we have at the vertex is a maximum, we said that in part A, so the maximum value 
is going to be 8, the y-coordinate of the vertex. All right. And then in part C, it says state the domain and range of the function. We don't actually have to graph this function to know what the domain and range is. We said earlier the domain is always going to be all reals for a parabola. That's still true. But for the range, um, because this function is upside down, we know that it looks like this. And we know from the vertex that the y value here is 8, which means that the function will not go above this value, which is 8. So it's only going to be from the 8 down that you're going to have y values. So for the range, we're going to say that it's going to be anything that is 8 or below. So we're going to put over here in our range y such that y values are less than or equal to 8. And that takes care of part C. And so now we're going to have you do this little guy. And then we'll go on to example 5. And I'm going to check my time here. This is a little bit of a longer, um, there are six examples, so we've, we've got some time. Um, so here we go. They want us to now put this all together and graph it. But again, we kind of already did that in example one, so it shouldn't be a big deal. I'm going to graph it using a t-table, but I'm going to be strategic about the values that I choose for that t-table. So to do that, we start with the vertex. x equals negative b over 2a. The b value in this case is 4. The a value is 1, and so we take negative 4 divided by positive 2, and we get negative 2 as our x-coordinate. That becomes my vertex right over there. And then to find the y value, I need to plug in negative 2, and then evaluate. So negative 2 squared is positive 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 3. So we get 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. Add 3 to that, and you get negative 1 as your y value. So it turns out that the vertex is negative 2, negative 1. And now, again, we want to be strategic about this. Um, over here, I'm going to go ahead and put my vertex on my graph. And I'm going by 1 here, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 1 is going to be right about here. And this is my middle point. So remember, I want to pick a point that is to the right and to the left, but that it has to be equidistant. And I also like to pick zero because zero is an easy number to plug in. So I notice that here's my, my middle, and if I go two units to the right, that's zero. So I'm going to go ahead and put a zero here, but I also want to then go two units to the left, and that's going to be negative four. So those are the points that I pick. And then when I plug in 0, it's very easy to plug in 0 because the y value will just be the 3. And because they're symmetric, this will also be 3. So it makes it very easy to graph it this way when you have the right points. So now I'm going to put 0, 3. So here's 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we have negative 4, 3. And then we graph the parabola. And we notice that it makes sense because it's a positive x squared, so it should be facing up like this. And here's my vertex in the middle, my axis of symmetry. You can draw in right there, and my vertex right here at the center of it all. Alrighty, so now you can try the same exact uh, method to graph these two little guys, and then we will go to our last example. And it's a word problem. Lo and behold, I know you love those. And it says the cheerleaders at Lake High School launch t-shirts into the crowd every time the Lakers score a touchdown. The height of the t-shirts can be modeled by the function h of x equals blah, where h of x represents the height in feet of the t-shirt after x seconds. Part A says to graph the function. I'm going to let you guys do that on the calculator. In the interest of time, I'm not going to graph that here, but um, you've seen enough of the graphing. It says here at what height was a t-shirt launched? And that basically means at time zero, when it was launched, at the, uh, that's when, they, when the time was actually equal to zero. So that's x equal to zero. And if x equals zero, and you plug it into this function, you're going to get zero, zero, and six. So basically, it's the y-intercept. So zero, six is the y-intercept. And so to answer the question, at what height was the t-shirt launched? At six feet. Alrighty, and then in part C it says, what is the maximum height of the t-shirt? When was the maximum height reached? This is basically asking us to find the vertex. 
the first part of the question is, what is the maximum height of the t-shirt? That's the y value of the vertex. The second part of the question, when was the maximum height reached, is a time question. And time is seconds. And so time is x. So that's the x part of the vertex. But basically, if we find the vertex, we will be able to answer both parts of that question. So we're going to do that. And to find the vertex, we're going to do um, x equals negative b over 2a again. And this time, the b value is 48. And the a value is negative 16. So we get negative 48 divided by negative 32, which is going to give us a positive value here. And I believe it's going to be uh, a fraction here. I don't think 32 goes in there evenly. I think it's going to be 1 and a half or a half. But let's see here. 48 divided by 32, 1 and a half. I was correct, Amundo. Okay? So we're going to get 1.5 seconds. So when was the maximum height reached? at 1.5 seconds. That's the second part of the question. The first part of the question is what was the maximum height? To do that, we need to plug um, the x value into the equation. So negative 16 times 1.5 squared plus 48 times 1.5 plus 6. So 1.5 squared is 2.25 times negative 16 gives us negative 36. Um, 48 times 1.5, 48 times 1.5 is going to be 72, and then plus 6. So our final answer is going to be negative 36 plus 72 plus 6, and it gives us 42. So the maximum height that was reached was 42 feet at 1.5 seconds. So now we're going to have you do this last do-it-yourself question, and once you have completed this question, you will have completed your notes for this lesson, and I will see you in class, and thanks for watching.